If you've just got a Retroid Pocket 2 Plus and want to know what to expect when you start it up, as well as the options and choices you'll be presented with, then this video is for you. If you're a regular to the channel, you'll probably be familiar with the problems I've had with Retroid and that they eventually sent me out a replacement unit that I got a few weeks ago, and it's been sitting on my shelf since I got it. And that's what I'm going to be setting up today. If you're interested in the background to all this, then I'll leave a link in the description. Anyway, let's get started. When you first power on the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus, you'll be greeted by the welcome screen. Just press the R1 shoulder button to move to the next screen. Select your language and press R1 again. In order to get everything set up properly, you're going to need to connect to the internet. So tap on the open WLAN button. Turn on the use Wi-Fi toggle and select your Wi-Fi when it shows up. Enter your password and you should then see that you're now connected. The next step is to select your time zone. So tap on the open time zone settings, select your region and then select your time zone within that region. Go back to the time zone screen and press R1 to move to the next step. This step is to decide whether you want to enable Google Play services or not. You're going to need Google Play shortly, so make sure this is enabled and press R1. You're then presented with a list of apps that Retroid have curated for you to install. So which should you choose? That's entirely up to you, but personally I haven't installed any of them. I'm not going to run down the list explaining my reasons for each one, but basically it's a mixture of things I'm not interested in, things I know the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus isn't powerful enough to run well, and things that I do want, but I already have the Pro version of the apps. Add to that that all of them are out of date when you install them, and I figure I'm better off getting the latest version of just the apps I want, rather than filling up the small amount of storage with a load of out of date stuff I don't really want or need. With the app selection out of the way, the next step is to select which launcher you want to use. You have a choice of two. The Retroid launcher, which looks great and is specifically designed for launching your games, or the bog standard basic AOSP Android launcher. Much as I like the Retroid launcher, it has a few problems as far as I'm concerned, so I'm going to select the AOSP launcher. And that's it. So I'll hit the complete button and you'll see that it dumps us into the Retroid launcher, despite having chosen the AOSP launcher as the default. So I'll quit out of that, and we're now taken to the AOSP home screen. Of course, if at any point you want to go back to the Retroid launcher, then you can just select the icon from this screen. With a quick sideways swipe, we're taken to the second of the home screens, and the icon for the Play Store. Click on that and sign into your Google account. However, when I tried to do that, I hit a problem. I just kept getting a message saying that it couldn't connect to Google servers, despite there being a perfectly good Wi-Fi connection. I've no idea why it was doing this, but I then wondered about checking what firmware version I was on. As I went to check, a notification came through saying there was a system update available. You can also get to the updater by going into the settings and scrolling down to system, then choosing updater. You can see that I'm currently on version 1.0.0.8. That shouldn't make any difference to my ability to get into my Google Play account. But since I can't get into it, I figured this was worth a try. And it was something I was going to need to do at some point anyway. Clicking on the check update button, you can see that the new version is 1.9.0.0 and I'm going ahead and clicking to install that. This takes a bit of time so I'll spare you the lengthy way and fast forward to, the, to near the end of the process. Now that it's complete, let's try connecting to the Google Play Store again. And now it works. And at this point, you can just go ahead and log into your Google Play Store account. So what's next? Now that you've gone through the initial setup, 
Well, you've got a few options, and which you choose depends on how comfortable you are at setting things up yourself. And if you're happy at configuring RetroArch and tweaking settings to get things to work properly, or do you just want some options on a front end you can pretty much dump onto your Retroid Pocket 2 Plus and let it do most or all of the hard work for you? If you'd prefer to have the heavy lifting done for you, then I've got a couple of great recommendations for you. They are both fantastic choices, but as with most things, there are pros and cons, so I recommend watching both videos to find the one that works best for you. Both of these are on the screen at the moment, so just pick one and check it out.